Hey, how you going? And welcome to the channel. My name's Pete. Uh, this episode, uh, a little bit of a mixed bag. Um, we start off, uh, just in case anyone was curious about uh, cane harvesting and the haul outs and that sort of stuff, I've just got a, a quick little clip at the start, uh, just showing a uh, harvester um, in its natural habitat uh, doing its thing. Um, and then also one of the haul outs just offloading uh, from the paddock into uh, one of the, one of the uh, cane bins. Um, then we do a uh, quick run down the down the road. Uh, picked up a new tractor for work, um, which went pretty well actually. Um, I'll leave you to watch that bit. Uh, and then a few repairs on or upgrades on my MIG welder. Um, I do have a stick welder here, or it's a TIG welder, uh, which I do want to get fixed up and run. Well, it does run. I just got to work out how to operate it as a stick welder. I think it's pretty straightforward, but that'll be another video. That's not this one. But anyway, um, on with this video. I uh, hope you enjoy. Thanks. So this paddock doesn't have a turnaround at the end for them, which is why the, uh, the haul out's driving backwards. These things make a hell of a noise when they're unloading. So we've just purchased this wonderful machine, John Deere 3140 four wheel drive. Um, he said it was a 79 model, but I had a look and I don't think they started making these till 1980. So this may be a very one of the very first ones. Uh, reason they're selling it is that shed used to extend across. This bit fell off a while ago and they're a bit worried that this thing might go to rack and ruin. <clears throat> this farm's no longer a working farm, so they don't really need it. So they decided to sell it before it gets destroyed by the weather, by the elements. So we bought it. We're here now to pick it up. Uh, the story was, uh, it's been here for about 10 years. Um, it had an issue with the hydraulics, so they parked it up in order to fix it, and then health problems happened to the owner, and this is where it stayed. So we've got to see if we can get the thing driving so that we can get it out of here because I don't think we're going to push it and we've got to there's Wayne hi Wayne <laughs> we're going to push it uh, sorry we've got to try and back the Mac down over that hill uh, at the very least so we can get the airline to it pump up the tires anyway let's get on to it 
Okay, so good news, the tyre pumped up. It's, we've only just got it off the ground, like it's not even registering on the gauge yet. We don't want to push our luck with uh, overpressuring it. Big bad Wayne's grab the battery. Next step is we put the battery in. We have checked transmission oil, engine oil, coolant, and air filter, and fuel, and that all seems fine. So our next step is to see if it starts. Uh, bloke just turned up, had a talk to us. Apparently, it's only been about three years, three or four years, he said, since we've uh, since he's run it. So, not quite the challenge I thought it was going to be. Fuck. You are so good to me, Wayne. Oh yeah, should have. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, so it's all. Sorry. <laughs> yep. Um. So, do you want to jump up on there, or do you want to do the starter, or? I'll jump up there. You can jump up? Okay. What do you to do? Just get ready in case he takes off. It should be in neutral. Um, that there is the engine shut off. I don't know what that is. And I think that's your throttle, that side. So we'll give it, yep, that's your throttle. Just give it some, just off idle. Pull button on the dash. Are you ready? Oh, there we go. Come on. I wanted a challenge. All right, let's see if it moves. Starts, runs, drives beautifully. We've got steering. I haven't checked the hydraulics at the moment. All I want to do is get it on the truck. So we're just cleaning up the truck. We're about to move it up into a position where we can load it. And that'll do it, I think.
Okay, so she's on, she's strapped down. Um, we're just waiting for the guy to come back with a receipt for us before we leave. Uh, everything's going well, for the most part. Okay, so we got it back to the shop. Um, I was going to film unloading it, but then uh, the boss turned up and there's panic stations everywhere and we all had to just get the thing off the truck. So, anyway, here it is, off the truck. Um, can't work out how to start it. I have been... Let me take you around and show you. I have been just bridging the starter motor to fire it up. Um, having a look inside the dash. We found that zip tied up under the dash here. So not sure what's going on there. Um, but anyway, that doesn't work. Um, I mean, the key turns, but it doesn't do anything. Um, I believe that switch is possibly ignition, but most likely lights. Um, that's a bit sticky anyway. But yeah, anyway. Don't know how to start it still. Got to do a bit of... Uh, Bit of investigation in the wiring there, I think. Um, as far as a will at start video goes, that was pretty disappointing. It fired straight up. I was hoping for a bit of a challenge. But anyway, it's kind of a good thing because, you know, we got it out of there quick smart. The tire is still holding air. Again, it's a good thing, but looking at the uh, condition of it, not feeling confident. Anyway, that'll do. So just to show the uh, finished job, I suppose. Um, got the multimeter set up on the battery there. We have we have replaced the ignition barrel. Uh, let's give it a look inside. I'll put the camera down so I can open this. Okay, so inside here, we still have this one connected. This is, uh, so that was ignition. First click was ignition, then Parker's. Uh, then headlights and I believe we've got one two three positions ignition Parker's headlights yeah that's right so that is essentially just lights uh, wired in this one uh, so that is just ignition and start uh, incidentally the start was that rocker switch I don't know if that was original but that's what it was so that's all now been wired into the key lights we will worry about at a later date don't really need them at the moment but anyway um that's ignition Look, make sure she's in neutral do the gear shift handshake and we should be good to go So there you go, that's all working. Pretty happy with that. Okay, gonna do a bit of an unboxing here. Um, I've purchased myself a nice new shiny one inch drive air impact gun. Um, based on the fun I had getting those cylinders apart, um, I thought might be nice to have something here at home. Um, now, I'm not expecting huge amounts of quality from this. I think most, uh, from what I can find, impact wrenches range from around $1,500 up to probably two, three, four grand, depending on your brand and type and everything. This cost 200 bucks delivered. So, let's see what wonderful things China has to offer. <gasps> Comes with a certificate. That must be quality. 
Oh, there. Job. I think I'm going to frame that. That's just lovely. Um, all right. What are we doing? She's got some weight to it. Oh yeah, the handle. Get these things out of the packet and sit them on the bench so we can have a reasonable look. Oil. <laughs> I'm guessing this is the bolting hardware for that handle. So, I can tell you, I wouldn't want to drop it on my toe. Yeah, well, you know, looks like a rattle gun. Feels like a rattle gun. Don't know what else to say about it. Um, in anticipation of this, I also went out and bought a bunch of sockets. Now, what have we got? The smallest one, 46 up to 75 mil. It even fits. How about that? It's like it was made for it. That way. There you go. Here's my new toy. So there you go. That's the three quarter. Oh, that's the big girl. Just looking at that, I kind of suspect this was originally designed as an inch and a half drive and they've actually machined all that down back to uh, inch drive. Could be wrong, just guessing. But anyway, it looks, you know, it looks the part. It's heavy enough. Um, they did actually supply the spanner to do the handle up, which was nice. You know, only quality products do that. And, uh, yeah, air inlet. Apparently these fittings are too small to run this. You need a, uh, I think it says at least half inch drive, a half inch size, uh, half inch hose. Um, which all this is only, what, 3.8 or thereabouts. But anyway, um, I'll sort something out with that. <coughs> I don't actually have a use for this right at the moment. Um, it's just I wanted it, so I got it. Uh, but I will certainly have use for it in the future. But anyway, I just thought I'd show you the unpacking. All right, we've done everything with this rattle gun except actually use it, so let's give it a go, see what it does. This is my trusty old three-quarter drive socket set, um, which I've had pretty much since I was an apprentice, I think. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of mismatched sockets in there, and even broken ones, um, and odd impact sockets here and there, and ones that have been modified. It's been a good kit, um, but it's time to upgrade. Um, furthermore, this is my breaker bar, which also came with the same kit. If you can see the end there, how that's kind of, well, it's been repaired once or twice, and these are now flared out. Um, again, it still works, nothing wrong with it, but I think it's time to upgrade a bit. So here's a shiny new kit that I bought off eBay. Let's open her up and see what we've got.
look at that, eh? Uh, all impact stuff, because, you know, it's normally what I use. So from three quarter up to two inch. And that's fine because that overlaps with the inch drive socket set I've got. Uh, a couple of extensions. A ratchet that's, well, ratchet. Oh, there we go. <laughs> the tag seems to want to rest in the middle where it does nothing. You know, what do you expect from eBay? <coughs> um, <coughs> so with the breaker bar, I also lashed out and bought another breaker bar. The design on the end of this, I think, to me that looks a bit stronger, but time will tell. It may actually be weaker. But anyway, my new toy. So just looking at this ratchet a little more carefully, they may have actually designed it. Actually, I was going to say, it looks like they may have designed it so that in the middle is actually locked in both directions. Um, but just looking at the way that moves and can move all the way around, I'm pretty sure it's just absolutely woeful quality. Not too concerned. I mean, I bought it more for the sockets than uh, than anything else. Um, they're black, like impact stuff is, but I'm pretty confident that's not impact. Anyway, um, like I said, it was uh, $90, I think I paid for it, delivered. So, you know, what do you expect for that sort of money? So while we're on the subject of uh, tooling upgrades and so on, um, the bucket on the 580, uh, at some point I've got to refurbish that whole thing. So I'm trying to get my welders up to uh, up to a stand for uh, for doing that job. Now, to that end, um, it was probably about a month ago, uh, there was a bloke advertising a heap of old welding cables and torches and all sorts of stuff um, for a pretty cheap price, to be honest. Um, so anyway, I went down and I bought them, and in amongst the kit was this Minzel, Minzel hand feed torch. So this has its own feeder built into the handpiece. Um, this is more used for uh, aluminium and that sort of stuff. It's an enormously long cord to it. Um, and the idea is, like if you're doing light, like 0.9mm um, aluminium wire, a lot of the time it just spools up. It's, it's too hard to push it through the wire from the feeder back in the welder. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute down at the shed. So they make one of these hand feeds. So this is actually a little feed wheel inside here which actually pulls the, the wire through as well. Um, <coughs> Pretty expensive bit of kit apparently. Um, <clears throat> I've been told these are about three thousand dollars roundabouts, brand new. Second hand one, twelve to fifteen hundred, depending on their condition. Um, so yes, uh, all of this stuff, incidentally. So there was the this torch. Um, there's just another normal handheld torch, again with a, a much longer lead than the one I normally have. Although the trigger is broken, but that's fixable. Um, the thing I like about these is they have this connector so that you can easily just transfer from one over to the other. Uh, so my next job is to try, I've actually bought the adapter that fits onto this. So my next job is to mount that adapter onto the welding machine. Let's go have a look at the welding machine. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Should also point out there was a heap of other cables and things. There's a few TIG torches and uh, earth cables and just normal stick welder cables that came with it. That's probably about half of the other stuff that was with it. Oh, there's something else I also forgot to mention. Was the air arc gouger. Oh, this crazy kid. So that also came with it. I hope I'm in focus there. So here's the other half of, that, uh, of this piece which pretty straightforward, just plug, plugs in there and you screw that up and that's it, that's attached. But what we have, so here in the welder, this is the actual wire feed, these are the wheels in there, the spool sits up on there, wire feeds in through here, through this guy, through these rollers, clamps down on there and pushes it out the line here. I've already half pulled this apart, um, but anyway that's the normal 
fitting that goes into it. There's your wires that go from the switch on your handpiece. Um, so all of this comes out and is replaced uh, with this guy who sits in there. So that's the mission for today, is to actually mount that in here. As I mentioned, I've already had this apart. Um, this, this piece here slides inside there and there's a screw there that uh, locks it in place that should look like that but it's broken off. Um, I tried to put a cut through it and even put heat onto it to try and unscrew that and for love nor money it would not move. So I managed to tap that piece out. You can sort of see it's bruised a bit there where I was tapping it out. Um, for the new piece I don't actually need that box screw because um, it has a thread on the back of it that actually tightens up on there. So to bypass that, I'll just ground a little bit off the side just to make clearance for where that piece goes in. Should work. So that fits in there nice and neatly. The only downside to this, uh, that centre main hole is perfectly concentric, but the fitting as a whole is not. And uh, I need to make it concentric so that the little skirt can fit in there. With much work with the uh, die grinder, Oops, it's a beautiful neat fit. Oh. Happy with that. So boring that hole out to take this plastic piece of trim was a partial great waste of time in that it all fits nice and neat, covers up all the nasties, but as you can see, it's not sticking out far enough for me to attach the, uh, the welding torch. Um, so I could undo this piece inside here and reposition it forward. That's getting too complicated. I'm not going to do that. You see there's a big hole at the back there, so this part's not sealed. It doesn't need to be that good. I'll just clean the burrs up there, put a bit of paint on it so it doesn't rust, and that'll do us. Next step will be to connect the gas line and the switch wires. Um, I've already pulled the switch wires through. They go up to this plug. I think I'll just trim this wire and just hard wire them onto that. And the gas one's easy. Just take the plug off there, not the, the hose I mean, and feed this line through and reconnect that. slack with that just in case beautiful there's a part of me tempted to just curl this up and leave it all inside here and just connect those with a couple of spade terminals insulate it all just in case I want to put this back to original yeah I think I will do it that way okay trim these tails crimp new ends on them uh, that was a bare wire so I just put a bit of shrink wrap around that just to insulate it connect those up I'll coil this up and zip tie it out of the way somewhere Okay, hose connected, wiring's connected, uh, everything's tied up and out of the way, put the cover back on and we are done. First test.
I don't know if you can see that, but that's the difference in length. So, yeah, probably about a metre longer. Not that much, but certainly doesn't hurt. So, as far as the failed switch is gone, or goes, uh, my intent there, this is off this welder, same sort of thing happened, and I just set up a uh, toggle switch on that. I've ordered another one of these switches, I'm just waiting for it to arrive. When it gets here, I'll make a similar kind of a fashion. I did that oh, 10 years ago. It's been working beautiful ever since. So, that's the plan. Okay, so I have fixed the switch on that. It's a bit agricultural looking, but you know, it's surprisingly comfortable to be honest. Um, anyway, I've got it set up with uh, solid MIG wire. The only gas I have is pure argon for aluminium. So it's not gonna be a proper weld, but we're here to test the machine, not the uh, quality of the weld. So anyway, I will take the microphone out because of all the noise and uh, we'll fire it up and see what she does. setting number six out of ten. Uh, I've now turned it up to number nine and we'll have another run, see how she goes. Okay, so that's the first weld. Now that looks to me like it's got slag on it. They all do. problem with that is um, that's just solid wire so I don't know what's going on there unless actually uh, what I should probably do is read the label off it and look it up to find out exactly what this wire is it just came free with the uh, with all the other welding stuff that I got but anyway um, as far as the welds go Pretty happy with that. Just looking at the tag, yes, it does say flux cord welding wire. Anyway, I will look this up and see if I can find out what it was designed for, what its, what its purpose is. Okay, so best information I can find out about that particular wire. Um, I can't find anything on that exact wire. Um, there's a one that's rated at uh, the 42 number uh, that's a 52 so there's one oh sorry it's a 46 and the other one is a 60 the 46 seems to be rated as just a general fabrication wire for uh, a nice neat finish whilst the 60 is a low hydrogen type of wire which would be ideal for welding you know cutting edges uh, which is what I want to do um, but there's nothing on the the 52 which is what I've got so if anyone knows more about this product, right, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, in the meantime, I'm not going to use it to weld up that cutting edge. Uh, might be fine, but just in case it's not, I'm gonna, uh, there won't be enough there to do that job anyway. So I'm gonna have to buy another roll of wire. So I may as well just get the right stuff and do it properly from the start. Um, incidentally, it is supposed to be used with pure argon. So, you know, pure luck, we got that bit right. Um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, that said, we're here to test the machine, not the wire, uh, and I am over the moon with the machine. That works beautifully. Really happy with that. So uh, yeah, we uh, it, this aspect at least is uh, ready to go for uh, refurbishing a uh, a four in one bucket. Yay! All right. So this video seems to be dragging on a bit. I think I'll end it here. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like, subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell, leave your comments, all those good things. Um, thank you for watching. <laughs>